In this video, we're going to begin to look at how you sequence nucleic acids. Um, we're going to look at restriction enzymes that cut uh, nucleic acids, how we can separate nucleic acids by size with electrophoresis, uh, the chain termination method about um, that concerns how we sequence DNA, um, look at the human genome, and how sequence can tell us about evolution. First, we begin with just an overall what sequencing kind of means, and really, why would you ever want to know the sequence of nucleic acids? And the reason for that is we go back to our previous video where we talked about the central dogma of biology. Well, if you know the sequence of DNA, you know the sequence of proteins. You know what proteins you're going to make. Um, this is complicated, though, because not all DNA makes RNA, but DNA that doesn't make RNA can still influence how much protein is created or the expression of a protein. And overall, the strategy for sequencing is as follows. One, you cleave your nucleotide into small enough uh, polymers that you can sequence. Uh, two, you determine the sequence of the residues in each fragment. And then three, you determine the order of the fragments by aligning the fragments that you sequence. And originally, the first uh, sequence ever done was tRNA, 76 residues. It was made by randomly cutting the sequence using snake venom and then trying to piece together uh, the puzzle from there. Um, this was extremely tedious, took roughly seven years to do seven nucleotides. Um, and so since then, we have much better tools to sequence DNA. In sequencing DNA, what we do is we use uh, restriction endonucleases. And restriction endonucleases are found in bacteria, and they're used to resist uh, invasion from bacteriophages. Now, bacteriophage is simply a virus that targets bacteria. And so what bacteria have is called a restriction modification system. Bacteria will methylate certain parts of their genomes, and by methylate I mean add a CH3 group. In that same bacteria, they have restriction endonucleases. These restriction endonucleases will cut at the same site that is being methylated. For example, let's say that a bacteria has a methylase to add a CH3 to a guanine in the sequence of GG ATCC. And they also contain an enzyme that will cut the sequence GG ATCC. Well, that restriction endonuclease won't cut DNA that is methylated, so they prevent cutting of their own DNA. But they will cut DNA that is unmethylated. So any foreign DNA that has a sequence of GG ATCC will be cut and destroyed. Now, endonucleases, there are two different types or classes of endonucleases. Uh, endonucleases uh, cleave within the polynucleotide strand, and so biochemistry, that's mainly what you, we use. We use endonucleases. Exonucleases cleave the terminal residues. Um, so we usually use endo. Uh, remember, endo, n, means inside. Exo means outside, so endo cleaves within. Exo cleaves the terminal. And we have different types of restriction enzymes. Type 1 will not cut out the recognition sequence, but it will cut somewhere else. Um, going back to our example, if our recognition sequence is GGATCC, um, it, type 1s will cut maybe 100 base pairs away from this, which for our purposes is not useful as biochemists. Biochemists use type two restriction enzymes. Type two cuts exactly at the recognition site. And this is useful for us because when we're doing experiments, we want to know exactly what's happening. So if we know the recognition sequence and we use type two, we know a cut is happening there. And here's a, a table of um, just a few type two restriction enzymes. 
we know over 11,000 of them. Here are the more um, frequently used ones in the laboratory. And their naming scheme goes, uh, you get the name of the organism it was found in. So for example, eco was found in E. coli. Uh, the letter means what strain. So R is type RY, uh, R RY13. And the Roman numeral, numeral means what order were they found in? So here we have eco R1, eco R2, and eco R5. So the fifth one found, the second one found, and the fifth one found. Uh, the sequences here will say where it's cut, and these arrows are showing you where in that genome the physical cutting happens. Now, if we look at restriction sites, they mostly happen at palindromes. Uh, a palindrome is a word that is spelled the same backwards and forwards, uh, race car being an example. For DNA, a palindrome is 5 prime to 3 prime on one strand is the same 5 prime to 3, uh, three prime on the other strand. So G A A T T C, G A A T T C. Um, so there's two different cuts you can make. One is an asymmetrical cut, which leaves uh, overhangs. So if you imagine that uh, Eco R1 makes this cut, the blue part goes away, the gray part goes away. You have four bases that don't have a hydrogen bond partner. These are called sticky ends, because you can think of these open hydrogen bonds as being sticky. Um, that's generally what you want to use, as these are easier to work with. The second type of cut is if you cut on a symmetry axis, then you have two strands, um, here again gray and blue, and every base in that strand is hydrogen bonded to each other. These are called blunt ends um, because there is no sticky overhand. Um, you can still use blunt ends. They're a little trickier to use, and we might go into that uh, later in the course uh, when we talk about uh, using these techniques. Now, after you have digested or cut up your DNA, you can separate your DNA by size using gel electrophoresis. And here in this picture, I have what gel electrophoresis looks like. Um, you have a gel that's either made out of agarose or polyacrylamide um, between two glass plates. Uh, you have a buffer, and you load your samples onto the top of the gel. And this gel is connected to electricity, positive on the bottom, um, negative on the top. Now, DNA is negatively charged. And so when you turn on this electricity, the negative uh, DNA will be attracted towards the anode. Um, and normally, electrophoresis separates molecules by three things. Their overall charge density, that is how negative or positive it is, its size, and its shape. And luckily for us, DNA, no matter um, what the size is, it has the same charge density and it has the same shape. Um, no matter what DNA you look at, that's always going to be true. So the only thing that is different between fragments is the size. So gel electro electrophoresis separates by size only. And smaller fragments go further down in the gel than larger fragments. And for this, and the reason for this is they are physically traveling through a medium. Um, this medium has holes in it. Right? Smaller molecules can slip through the holes easier than larger molecules. So large DNA get caught up in the holes and don't travel that far. Small DNA um, do travel quite far. And so you can separate your DNA by size and then you can visualize them like, like what is being shown here, either by labeling, using some chemical, or using fluorescence. And that's it for this video. We will continue this discussion in the next video.